worship at Sale. Today we're going to be thinking about the Good Samaritan and so I'll share with you our Bible reading which you can find in Luke chapter 10 and starting to read at verse 25. On one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going along the road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring an oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of a robber? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. I want to tell you about somebody I've met during my recent uh, months as a TE and particularly serving as a chaplain at Abbott Lodge. So I want to tell you about Tess. Now Tess is 47 and to be honest, and I know you're not allowed favourites, but she is probably my favourite resident at Abbott Lodge at the moment where I am chaplain. She is loud. Her language is punctuated with expletives the likes of which I had never heard before. She makes me smile with her antics and her great big heart. Tess was abused from a very young age by her father's uncle. She was taken from her parents at the age of 11 years old and was then placed into care. She was a fighter and tells me that she was a very naughty girl. When she was 15, she was taken to live with the nuns. She's been a drug addict and she says she still takes drugs for fun occasionally. She has three children, but missed her two eldest boys growing up because she was in prison for fraud at that time. She has recently come out of an abusive relationship and currently is residing at Abbott Lodge where she is waiting to get a flat. All she wants to, to do is sit in her own flat with its own front door, shut it at night and sit quietly watching TV with no disturbances. I recently gave her some Word for Today books which she, loves, which she tells me she loves reading and she's told me that she knows that God loves her. But the thing is, she needs me, she needs you and she needs Christ. I could go on and tell you about so many other residents that live there. There's Mary, who's a, drug, who's a drug addict and her room is full of needles. There's Jack, who's a sex offender and cannot speak because of a brain injury. So many of the residents in Abbott Lodge have similar stories. In fact, I don't think I have ever seen so many broken people as I have since being a chaplain there. What, however, they all share in common is that they need a fresh start in life, a break, a chance. They all need Jesus. We read earlier the parable of the Good Samaritan found in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. It's a really familiar parable. However, there's always something new we can learn. 
Both the Levi and the priests felt that they had good reason not to stop. The road between Jerusalem and Jericho was notoriously a dangerous route. Now the priests feared that the, the man was dead as he passed and he knew that if he touched a dead body he would be unclean and would miss out on his turn of duty in the temple. He was more interested in his duty than his service. And the Levite's motto was safely, was safety first and he wasn't prepared to risk his own safety to help others. And then there is the Samaritan. The villain in the story has arrived and yet it is this villain who reaches out and shows love. God's single most important commandment is found just before he begins the parable. In Luke 10 verse 27 he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. Sometimes we can get caught up in the rituals of church and all that we need to do, but if we have no love then we completely miss the point and everything is meaningless. In John chapter 13 verse 35 we read, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. If you want to be like Jesus and love your neighbour then you cannot pick and choose who to love. We can get so set on our agenda that we don't see the need God places right before us. My friends at Abbott Lodge, as I've already said, are broken people. Some of them make themselves almost impossible to love. But I have to remember, and sometimes quite often I have to remember, that God loves them. I have had the privilege to listen to a testimony of a friend of mine who recently was asked to tell her story as part of a Salvation Army Leaders Conference where they were discussing the subject of human sexuality and how we move forward as a Salvation Army on this subject. I've listened a couple of times to this testimony and she refers to the very familiar verse from John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. My friend says Jesus said whosoever may come. He didn't say whosoever may come but not if you're a drug addict or a sex offender or an alcoholic or if you've been in prison. Jesus is for everyone. He is for the whosoever. If people are sick they need Jesus. If they're in bondage, they need Jesus. If they're in trouble, they need Jesus. We need to ask God to give us compassionate hearts so that we will do whatever it takes to help those that are in need. We need to ask God to give us eyes to see the needs of those around us. A couple of weeks ago, I went for a long walk with my neighbor. Although we chat on our front paths often, we don't ever have an in-depth conversation. Last year, she told me she'd split up with her husband and she told me that she'd fell out of love with him. It was while we were out on our walk that she told me that things had started to go wrong when he physically assaulted her. I was shocked that right across the road from me, someone was having such an awful time. Friends, you don't need to travel very far to find somebody who needs to know that you care and that God loves them. We need to live lives that demonstrate our concern for others. People won't know how much we care until we show them. We need to live out a Christ-like life in front of their eyes. What about the man who sits outside Aldi? Why not stop and say hello, even buy him a sandwich? Or what about the lady in the supermarket whose child is having a meltdown? Don't talk, give her a smile Tell her she's doing a great job. Offer to pack her shopping for her. Or what about your neighbour who lives alone? Why not take her a bunch of flowers or send them a card? Or the harassed shop assistant who everybody has complained at because they've been waiting for far too long? Well, why not say to her, you're doing a great job today. Thank you for being here. Stop, listen, smile, take time. 
you'll be familiar with the song they need you they need me they need Christ listen to some of the words there are people hurting in the world out there they need you they need me they need Christ there are children crying and no one to care they need you they need me they need Christ and they'll go on hurting in the world out there and they'll go on dying drowning in despair and they'll go on crying that's unless we care they need you they need me they need Christ when people look at you and me what do they see demonstrated of the kingdom of God oh that they would see the beauty of Jesus in us God bless you.